Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Oh, it's so great to be here with you today. Hey, grab yourself a cup of tea and join me because um, this is one program I think you will never, ever, ever forget. If it's the first time you've watched this, my name's Arthelene Rippey. The program's Home Keepers, and we try to deal with anything and everything that affects the home. And that really, truly is anything and everything. And I've got a great home keeper with me today. Her name is Karen Pashley, and she is uh, accomplished in so many ways. Uh, very smart. She graduated early from high school, but her life has taken a lot of twists and turns. And she is the author of Precious in His Sight, a book that, a Christian novel that is uh, number one on Amazon right now. Uh, and some of this is really taken from her own life. But she's had sickness, she's had children's problems, she's had a lot of the situations that you're going through right now. And she has discovered that Jesus is enough. In fact, he's far more than enough. And I'm anxious for you to meet her. And um, Stephanie and Tiffany are going to show you how to antique wood. And it's not all that hard, really. There's, you know, there's just something about getting your hands in the grid and doing things and fixing things and making things that's uh, very, very, very rewarding. So I'm anxious for you to watch those girls. And also, let me remind you, we are viewer supported. And we thank you. We thank all you wonderful viewers who have helped us so many times and continue to do so. The information is on the screen. If you use credit card or debit card, that's 1-800-229-0059. Or the address is there also, post office box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, we're going to go to the kitchen now and uh, teach you how to antique some wood and uh, give you some ideas to have some fun. Maybe your kids would enjoy uh, working with you. Take a look. It is another great day because we have Tiffany from Nook and Cranny, and today she's going to be sharing secrets with us. Okay, a little Let's trade tell, secret. Little trade secrets. You know how you have brand new wood, and you wonder how in the world do they turn it into old looking wood, which I just love the look of. It's fabulous. She's going to show us how. Mm -hmm. She's going to teach us a little something today. So we're not having a finished project or anything like that. She's just giving us a little trade secret. Yes. How to do this? Yes. Um, reclaimed wood is very popular, but a lot of people don't know it's not very safe. Um, it's fun to find things on the side of the road and turn it into something, but there's a lot of times termites involved, a lot of bacteria, oils, things like that. You really just don't things know. Things you don't think of when things you're picking you don't think. things up pallets, on the side of the road. <laughs> pallets I used to get super excited about until yeah. I did some research, and a lot of them are treated with chemicals to make them with, you know, withstand the rain and things that, you know, that, right. that stuff that they're holding on. A lot of them hold oil. So it's so not you don't good. want that in your house. You don't want you definitely don't want that in your house. So what we've right. we've uh, developed a few techniques at our shop where we take green wood, which is freshly cut, um, never been treated wood, and turn it into something that makes it look like it's very old. Now let me say something. Now before you started all of this. Mm -hmm. You had a clothes shop, right? I this had a clothing not, boutique. This is not like no. This was not you I've, before. No, I've always been a DIYer. Right. I, I'm cheap or frugal, yeah. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so I've always refurbished furniture. But as far as building things and doing stuff like this, no. My dad's a carpenter, so I grew up around it. But I was more into clothes and makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had a pop-up shop. Before I did. This, it was right? a lot Where of fun. We traveled and, and sold clothes. Sold clothes and, and uh, yeah. So, so like this, going from that totally to different. This, <laughs> like I love seeing your pictures. Before it was like all these. These beautiful clothes and now it's like now it's wood sawdust <laughs> and paint everywhere and I love yes, it it's yes, fabulous yes so the, um so yeah so this is just turning new wood into looking like it's old wood mm -hmm. so it's super fun so the first thing that we like to do is actually take our bare wood and we sand it which I've already done and then we just pick um, a paint color and our sample here I've gone with teal and white so I've given you white and I've got teal and we're just going to basically rub it on here mm -hmm. oh so that's what I'm doing yep go ahead and rub it okay. on And you want you know, to get, if you don't have a sander, just take a piece of sandpaper. Exactly. S make it simple. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't. Yep. Sandpaper, a sander, whatever's easier for you. And I'll tell you in a second why we're going to use the sander. But you're going to get 
You don't want it super thick. You just want a nice uh, coverage on the wood uh -huh. because what happens after it dries is we're gonna take most of it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take, it's a little labor here. We're gonna take it away, but uh, the end result is, is all worth it. This is like therapy. It you really know how is. some people do, I do yard work. No, that's a nightmare. Okay, <laughs> yard work is a nightmare. This is therapy. <laughs> this is therapy. <laughs> I like this and fishing to me is I don't get to go fishing very often, but this just well, kind of lets your mind you open up and thinking yeah. you should take me fishing. I will. <laughs> I love fishing. Uh, you know what? Fishing show next time. There we go. We're doing a fishing On location. show. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one good coat. And then after you let it dry, I've got to dry one over here. You're going to sand most of that paint off. So now I have this super powerful sander here, mm -hmm. but again, you can use sandpaper. Mm -hmm. I just like this because it makes the job a little quicker. Mm -hmm. So you've got the coverage there and then you're actually gonna turn this on. I'll let you do it. Okay. And then you're just gonna run it over there until you pulled off about half of the paint you just pulled on. We're gonna there on and off okay. button. Okay, I just wanna make sure that wasn't the... Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go flying. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no right or wrong way to do this, but I like to pull about half of the paint off. Okay. To expose that wood again. Right. Because it, anybody is knows therapy, people. It, I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> when you have something that's old and reclaimed, the wood has chipped off or worn off. So that's what we're trying to give this look now. Now that we've exposed that blonde wood again, we kind of want to richen it up a little bit, and we're going to use some stain. Okay. So this is our gray stain, and I'm going to squeeze a little bit of that okay. out of there for you. Oh yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot in there. It's a sponge, so I it love likes the to stain that you guys have. It's I do absolutely too. Wonderful. Now this, you're just going to lightly kind of brush over it. You're not going to okay. go very, and you're going to. So you want some of the white to be still showing through. Okay. Okay. And then you're just going to kind of rub it over top of here. I think I would probably, if I were you, I'd probably just be at the shop all the time. Just I'm usually there every just, morning after I take my kids to school. And just making stuff. Just making things. And getting ideas. She comes up with the most fabulous ideas. I just love it. Now, the fun thing is, is you can, I've done brown and you've done gray, but we can swap. Okay. Because there's always different <laughs> colors in. Sure. You know, if you think of something that's been in the house for 100 years, it's been painted. It's been painted. So it's aged. The sunlight yes. has changed the color a little bit. Yeah. So you can use multiple colors. And this gives you a reclaimed look. It can give you kind of a um, and you a can't beachy, go wrong. weathered yeah. look. You can go with all things, depending on what color stains and paints you use. Yeah. Look at and that. And then after you let it dry, if you want to sand it again, you can. But we usually just leave it and let it dry. And it goes from this blonde, fresh wood to something that looks old now, and Now, is this one sanded a little bit? That one is sanded a little bit. And that's the end result there. So this is what we did. We that's took what it from we did this blonde wood mm -hmm. and then we did a paint color which yep. I did white she did turquoise and then we sanded it and then we just did a little stain over it over and then the you could sand it. it a little bit more and then you could do whatever you want with it yeah and now in our workshops a lot of people use that and then we'll stencil words over mm -hmm. top of it but you could do this with a piece of furniture the layering is the key is to put a f colors on take a little bit off put some more on and it just gives it that aged and you know look. that furniture you, you see on the side of the road yeah. Tiffany no <laughs> I rescue it. She rescues it. <laughs> and then it. it sits in my garage until I have time to do something with it. But this is what you could do. Rescue that furniture you see sitting on the side of the road, sand it down, and make it your own. And this is just latex paint that we get from Sherwin-Williams. So you can use any kind of paint. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be latex. You know, whatever you have access to is best. Well, thank you for sharing some trade secrets. No it's problem. It's so exciting. We love having you. And we'll see you next time. Okay, great. Thanks we'll for having me. catch you guys me. next time. Well, really, those girls have way too much fun, but it's fun watching them, isn't it? And I am so pleased to be able to introduce you to Karen Pashley, and she has a new book out called Precious in His Sight, and it's doing very, very well. How long has it been out now, Karen? Uh, we launched the book April 26th, so just a few And weeks. it's already number one on Christian fiction yes amazon it is it's been number one all week this week in christian fiction so well that's really good congratulations that. and Thank welcome you. uh and your your life's pretty much been a novel <laughs> from what i've learned from it <laughs> yeah that'll be another book someday. <laughs> uh, but anyway we welcome you uh from nashville you. but you have you're very very familiar with florida absolutely we we lived here and raised our children here and uh enjoyed living in 
in the Tampa Bay area for 20 some years before we moved to Nashville. So, mm -hmm. yep, it's like coming home. Well, uh, she's an author and a speaker <coughs> and also a foodie, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> Tell us what that is. Well, I think a foodie is someone who just gravitates towards food. Uh, enjoying food and preparing food. And for me, it's all about sharing good food with other people. And so I uh, have a group that I started in the Nashville area, and I, it's called Girls Dine In. And I bring groups of women into my home, and we uh, prepare together a themed meal. And uh, I teach them, you know, various techniques of cooking and give them all the recipes. And what, what, it's really fun. What themes have you done? Oh my goodness, we've done, you name it, we've done it. We've done uh, Mexican food, Hawaiian, Cuban, Italian, uh, we do spring dinners. And you, ch you choose the recipes ahead of time? I create you, all the you, recipes. You prepare them to get, you create them? I do. I, I very rarely Can will, you move here? <laughs> <laughs> once in a while I will um, borrow a recipe from a restaurant chef and I will give him the credit or tweak a recipe that I've, I've found or maybe gotten from someone else. But most of the time I like to come up with original ideas so that I can pass those along to the ladies that come and then they have fresh recipes to share with their friends and family. And how many are in this group usually? Well, it's hosted in my kitchen. So I would think you'd have a waiting list. I have a pretty big list and it fills up. I send the uh, announcement out and it usually fills up within a day or a day or so. Why do you think this idea came to you? I think it was uh, partly my need to want to socialize with other women in a in a girls night out environment but it, without the girls night out I I just needed an outlet for my own social needs and I and I love to cook and and uh, the place better than the kitchen yeah so I, I brought it up together. to a, a group at a Bible study one day and I said would anybody be interested in this and all the hands went up <laughs> and I thought well we maybe we were on to something so we've, we've been at it about three years now oh if I'm ever in Nashville when you're doing that I, I would love to attend I would love, love to, to attend come. well mm -hmm. uh, that's one part of her life that <laughs> sounds like fun and happy but um, were you raised in a Christian home? No, not really. No, we were we were raised in the uh, Northeast and in a sort of um, you go to church on Easter mm -hmm. kind of a family. So I, I met the Lord, you know, uh, when I was 20 years old and newly married. So. You were uh, very smart. I apparently graduated at 16. Yeah, you know, back in those days, you could you could weasel your way around some of the uh, <laughs> the credits too. But yeah, school came easily to me, and uh, I've always uh, I think I'm I have a great memory, so things come easily to me as far as uh, you know educational type mm -hmm. of of things, I guess. But yeah, I've, I've I guess I'm smart, but I I feel that I'm a learner is what I am. If I need to know something, I I want to learn it, and I'm always and you don't ever have to stop that. No, I mean, I, hey, I'm 50 years old and I just learned how to write a novel. So if you, if you, know, you think you're too old to learn something, just go out and try yeah, that, it. Yeah, that, I think, I think people need to be reminded of that. Absolutely, really. it's, so, you know, I, hey. Don't I'm, ever stop learning. I'm in a new phase. I figured the first 50 years I was raising kids and, and uh, you know, homeschooling and all kinds of other things. In my next 50 years, I have lots more stuff I want to learn how to do. I hope I'm remembering this right, but I thought I read that you had a shotgun wedding. A shotgun wedding? Uh -huh. no. I thought I read that somewhere. Um, and the, the reason it grabbed me was because we had that conversation uh, last Sunday around the table. Mm -hmm. Somebody said shotgun and one of my grandsons said, what was that? But you married very young. I did marry very young, yeah. And were you expecting at the time? Yes. I guess so. Mm -hmm. and, um, because I read that, you know, amazingly, the marriage has endured. And you know, that's, that is, I give all the glory to God. I mean, marriage is hard enough for people who maybe have had great role models in marriage, uh, which neither my husband or I really did. Both of their families struggled in that area. Um, but we both met the Lord around the same time, my husband and I, and went through our various stages of mm -hmm. growth and one step forward, two steps back in our marriage, as, as many marriages do. But you know, 30 years this year, and and the what Lord is just what a testimony! It's just the Lord is good. He, you know, I think if you just keep pressing on and keep digging in and and um, trying to keep your focus on Christ and Christ in me, rather than what's going on 
around you, you'll be okay. And I'm not saying it's been easy. We've, you know, life is not easy. There are many obstacles, but um, I think my husband and I are just persevering people, and we love each other very much, and we have a, a great family and wonderful children. So. Yeah, I think it's such such a testimony because people think they get married and they have the ceremony under kind of adverse circumstances, but God is still, you know, He's still in that covenant. Yes. And when you honor that and all, he's, He is going to honor you. Now, you have four daughters? I have four daughters, yes. And what was it that influenced you to homeschool them? Uh, well, at the time, homeschooling was uh, becoming a very um, popular tool and a popular uh, choice for many people. And uh, it was presented to me and I, all my friends that homeschooled, their children just seemed so... Uh, they, they just seemed to have a, a camaraderie amongst the siblings and uh, the family seemed to enjoy time together that, that I wanted for my kids. And so we took the plunge and I, I prayed about it, of course, and I, and I said, okay, Lord, I'll do this for one, one, one school year. I'll try it for one school year. And, um, and we ended up uh, homeschooling for about seven years. So. It's a huge undertaking and you had four children I had three at the time, and I was pregnant with with the fourth. So yeah, so we had, you know, kids of all ages. <laughs> so and uh, <clears throat> what I've noticed with homeschoolers, they're usually you know, kind of ahead of everybody else. Uh, did did they flourish and do well? They did, and I'm I'm sort of a uh, hands-on learner. I love to do projects, and so I wasn't much of a a book curriculum kind of homeschooler. Um, but my children are bright and fun and learners as well, and they were supportive of each other. And at the time, I had, you know, I always had one in our various age groups, a high schooler, a middle schooler, an elementary, a toddler, or, you know, so, so there was always someone available to help the others. And uh, we just took advantage of the time. We did a lot of traveling and um, took our children, you know, on some, some great uh, learning opportunities, as we call them in the homeschooling. Yeah, <laughs> and um, when you do that, you realize how much time is wasted in public school. Yeah. Because they're like for six hours sure. and, and uh, homeschooling, you can get the lessons done. And, yes. And then, then you pick up education other ways, like with trips. And Absolutely. And I, I just used that time <clears throat> for the girls to, to bond, which is, is, I've seen the fruit of that now. My girls are 29, 26, 21, and 16 and they're very close. And even through college and mm -hmm. moving and marriage and other things, you know, they remain best friends and very close. And I, I attribute that to the time that they were able to, to spend together and bond during the, those kind of formative years. So. And uh, your husband in business and quite mm -hmm. entrepreneurial? He is, yes, my husband is quite the entrepreneur. He's a visionary, big thinking kind of guy. And um, and so he, he has a big personality and, um, and has always got a new project in the works, so. Well, it sounds like an exciting life. That's all I can say. With, uh, <laughs> these children, schooling them, you got a husband who's uh, very, very progressive. But you were, you were stricken with a disease that most people know very, very little about. Maybe some have never even heard of it. And it's mm -hmm. called uh, Meniere's, and it has to do with, with uh, balance and uh, with hearing, right? Yes. And um, is vertigo a part of that? Unfortunately, vertigo is one of the major uh, conditions that you deal with with Meniere's disease. And when I was diagnosed with it, I had never heard the term, had never, didn't know anything about it, and I was absolutely petrified. What was it that sent you to the doctor for the diagnosis? I, I had had a, a, a bout of vertigo uh, out of nowhere, and it, it just, it scared me. Of course, I thought maybe I had a brain tumor or something. I, you know, didn't know what was going on. And uh, my daughter was having her tonsils out the next morning. And as I was in the waiting room, uh, waiting for the the doctor to come out and tell me how she was doing, he sat down with me and I said, "You know, I had the weirdest thing happen last night." And he's a, an ENT, so he mm -hmm. got talking to me about it. And he said, "I think I know what's wrong. You need to come see me." And I went and saw him the next day and was diagnosed there, you know, right on the spot. So uh, it was kind of hard to hear, you know, that life could change dramatically. It, it may or may not. So for some people it can maintain at a certain level for many years and for other people it does not. So You describe 
the nausea, the dizziness, uh, to the point that you are absolutely debilitated. Yes, when it when it uh, would attack, it, it was completely. You were completely incapacitated, and uh, for me, the, the the disease just progressed. Each time, each attack became worse and worse and worse, longer, more intense, and to the point where you know my, we had to call ambulance several times because I I just felt I couldn't and take the, it anymore. The vomiting and the dizziness and. Uh, finally, it came to the point that you had a procedure I've never ever heard of. I, di mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what they would do. There, there is when it's not that intense. There is some kind of medications, right? There is, and and some people can control it, which I was able to with diet and uh, medication for several years, and then for for a select few, <laughs> the lucky ones <laughs> um, that have to, another path to go down, it, it can be more serious. And and there are uh, several procedures that doctors have available to them now. There is no cure for Meniere's, mm -hmm. other than the Lord's healing if mm -hmm. He chooses to to do that. But there are procedures, and this one has kept my symptoms at bay for about a year now. So I'm just thankful. But you told me about it. it's like a scary procedure. <laughs> It's a little scary, uh -huh. yeah, you know, it's, it was a little scary because it, it uh, basically erodes and takes away half of your brain's equilibrium. So the outcome of that for several weeks is your brain is trying to relearn how to steady itself and which side is up. So it, it wasn't as bad as the vertigo. I, I, I would have endured that versus one episode of the vertigo by far, mm -hmm. and I did. And so, you know, six weeks of uncomfortableness and not being able to get around very well, but the outcome is that I'm able, I'm here you with seem, you, and I'm able to walk and drive and run and write and speak. Praise God for that, yes. It's just been a great opportunity. If that's not enough, uh, you found out that you had a daughter with an addiction problem, mm -hmm. and, and as I understand it, she'd had it a while. Did she hide it really well? How do you hide that? You know, uh, addiction is a very sneaky thing, and uh, in, in, unfortunately, it's an epidemic with opiates in our country right now. Right. Um, my daughter, like so many others, uh, it started from an, an injury, and then she was uh, given painkillers, mm -hmm. and uh, she was one of the unfortunate, you know, segment of the population that will become addicted to painkillers. And uh, she was entering college at the time and uh, just, you know, continued to use painkillers throughout college and then progressed from there. And uh, we had no idea, absolutely. Yeah, because you could, you could kind of hide that. I mean, if you're smoking pot or something, you kind of know it if you're. Yeah, I mean, and she, after college, she moved and, you know, with her career mm -hmm. and uh, moved out of state. And we, d of course, saw mm -hmm. her fr very frequently. And she came home a lot and was very, very so close with the family. And I, I know that the Lord had his hand on her the whole time uh, and protected her from a lot of uh, things that could have gone even worse for her. But it was still an extremely scary situation, and um, we are grateful and praise the Lord that she's uh, been free from addiction for over a year now and has finished her treatment and is uh, is doing absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and there's so much corruption in that pharmaceutical business. There, um, there's a lot of big headlines here about pill mills, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, where greedy, unscrupulous people took advantage of. Uh, people like your daughter. Yeah, I think it's <clears throat> it's more so that that doctors even do current doctors are not necessarily educated as to how easily mm -hmm. people can become mm -hmm. addicted to painkillers. Mm -hmm. It's just frightening. If you just joined us and we are running out of time, I'm talking with uh, Karen Pashley and we've had her website up for quite a while. Uh, the book Precious in His Sight is uh, doing very very well in the marketplace and you can get it uh, through the website. You can get it on Amazon and uh, it's doing very, very well. I, I want to read something you wrote because um, that's important. The life of a Christian is not all peaches and cream, nor should it be. But when we bend down and pick up the bricks of hardship one by one and apply the amen of the Holy Spirit to them, we are building an impenetrable wall of faith that cannot be constructed any other way. 
We must work with God rather than running from Him in our hardships. We must never lose our hope. Storms will come. We shouldn't fear them. With God, we can persevere with dignity and joy. That is, that is just beautiful because in, I remember one uh, situation, I don't know if it's your daughter or the disease, but you said you really got furious with God. Yes. And um, I don't think God's afraid of that, though. He, he's not too no, put off he by can that. Handle it. <laughs> he can handle it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Don't you think that's part of the journey? Uh, because it's, it's, you have the, and I've had in my life just horrible things, and yes. you're calling on God, and yes. you're on the prayer rug, and you're doing all this, and it's like, yes, He's not hearing. You know, I, I think unless we express our pain to God, we're not really ready to receive His 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 love. You mm -hmm. know, and for me, I, I'm like a little toddler I, with the clenched fists and the. You know, and it's only when we're able to unclench those fists and surrender and, and then God can reach out and say, take my hand. I'm going to walk through this with you. You know, we're going to walk through it together. And, when, and to me, hope is the greatest resource that we have, you know. Absolutely. Um, you know, people who commit suicide, they've lost hope. Yes. I've heard that you can live, you know. 40 days without food, a couple of days without water, but you can't live two minutes without hope. And mm. uh, that's why the Lord really offers us that in abundance. And I know my viewers, Karen, and they've had illnesses and they've had mm. children who, you know, got into addiction and things. And, and I think you've been a great encouragement today uh, because you're just beautiful sitting there. You're an overcomer. And... Uh, your life encourages. Well, it's all all to Jesus. All glory to God. It's 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 His, His doing, not mine. But you know, we just have to hang on to that. Christ in us is the hope of glory. He is our hope, not the outcome of the circumstance. Just Him. Just the person of Jesus. And that is, uh, I think, when you reach that point and know it, mm -hmm. uh, that that's a point of maturity in the Christian life. That. Um, that you're not kicking and screaming when everything doesn't go your way or you speak a word or something and you're supposed to have something happen like that. Mm -hmm. God, God doesn't take directions from us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's all part of the journey. And, you know, Jesus himself said that, you know, there, were, there will be difficulties. Mm -hmm. He didn't say there will be no difficulties. He said mm -hmm. you will have difficulties. Yeah, he said you and will we, have trouble. We forget <laughs> that part. We forget that part sometimes. But when we come back to our senses, and come back to our sanity and say, you know, okay, God, let's walk through this difficulty together, and I'm just going to trust you in the midst Amen. of the hardship. Well, thanks for thank you for sharing your wonderful story. Uh, we are out of time, but if you're around here again, come and see us. Uh, what a what a wonderful blessing. This is kind of what Homekeepers is all about because we like as Homekeepers to encourage you, Homekeepers out there. A lot of us go through the same things. Join me next time. There's no higher calling than that of a Homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 